Welcome back everybody to Murphy Buddy's Golf on PlayStation 4. Today we've got a quick guide to ball types. So let's have a look at the different types of ball. Obviously there's the standard ball, you get an infinite number of those. Then we've got the beginner's ball that doesn't wear out again, it means you get an infinite number. We've got a curved shot ball called the side spinner. The sand viper for getting out of bunkers. The grass cutter, best suited for the rough. The Ultra Approach Ball, lets us use 15 yard approaches. The 160 Ball lets us fine tune the power. Super Low, that keeps it low in the wind. And finally, the Triple Precision Ball. Ball two. It's a par five. So the first ball we're going to look at is the Standard Ball, because we need a reference point. So Standard Ball doesn't do anything really, it's just standard. So let's just hit a shot with it. Great shot! So this club's got 280 power, we've got a bit of wind, but it'll carry 270, 266. Went 307 with a bit of downwind, nothing nothing especially special about it. Um, so let's play the whole hole. Again we're a bit downwind. Good, good. It doesn't give us anything like approach mode or anything particularly, but you know. It's the standard ball. So, let's try that again. But we'll use the beginner's ball. So one whole round, let's go to the beginner's ball. So what changes? Well, what changes really is our impact zone is much bigger, but we've lost power. So now instead of 280 yards, we've got 248. But our impact zone's got an extra pixel, for want of a better term. So it means we can hit our perfect impact more often. So what does that mean in reality? It means you should be more accurate, but you're going to be shorter. So again, we'll play the hole out with it. So as you can see, we didn't go nearly as far, we went 210. Not that it really matters on this hole too much. But just look how big the impact zone is. It's not the perfect impact zone, it's with the standard impact zone. It's much wider than it would normally be. So it's almost like you're choking back in order to get a better shot. Oh, for the eagle. So again, should be able to make the eagle pop. Inch pops. So next one to look at: side spinner. So, side spinner ball, standard impacts again. You don't get any distance. Back to standard distance. However, we can put much more spin on the ball, as we will attempt to demonstrate. So, even with normal, I didn't get perfect impact. I've got more side spin on it than I would have got. So, you can see the curve on that path. If I played that shot with standard balls, it wouldn't curve nearly as much. But again, we'll, we'll try we'll try and get a super side spin. Missed it. But again, even with standard side spin, you just get much more spin for your money. Good, good. So if you are a fan of spin, it's, it's the ball to play. What I should do is I should show you a normal ball spin for comparison, really. Got the eagle again. There we go, we've got ultra spin on it. So you can see that's ultra spin with the super side spinner ball. Get a curve on that. 
and we'll go back and we'll play it with normal normal ball and you can see the difference in spin which of course presumes I can hit the shot it's a par five so back to the standard ball let's try and get ultra spin on it this time got it first time so it's got some spin it but it hasn't got as much spin as that previous ball so that's the side spinner ball. See, it also straightens up a lot when it lands. And here's the side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the side spinner is much more curved to the shot on the left and the shot on the right. So you can really see it there side-by-side. -side. So the next ball we're going to have a look at is the Sand Viper. Um, sand Viper needs sand. Um, and what it does basically is gives you a, a better... Um, shot out the sand. So what we need to do is put the ball in the sand. So again, doesn't do anything to distance, doesn't do it to be impact full play. It's completely unremarkable. So let's see if we can get the ball in the bunker and I'll show you the difference. So 182 to go and a massive bunker to aim at. This is where I missed the bunker, isn't it? There we go. In the bunker. So, because we've got the sand viper, you will notice we've actually got quite a wide impact. A bit like the beginner ball on the on the turf. So we've actually got a wide normal impact zone, which is going to make this shot considerably easier. If though I still missed it. Uh, but I'll show you my standard ball in the bunker as well. You can see the impact difference. So if you're struggling with the sand... Sometimes it's not a bad idea to play with the sandbar because it has no penalty. Um, it, co it costs you nothing. You don't lose any distance. However, you get a benefit when you're in the sand. So let's go back and play the standard ball. Ironic that I missed the shot, really. Ball two. It's a par five. So let's go back to our standard ball. So let's put this ball in the bunker with our standard ball. That's a nice shot, actually. Got it on the money. Straight in the sand. Oh, get in the sand. Come on. Doesn't want to go in. No, just we'll just knock it in. There we go. So what you'll see this time is that our impact zone in the in the sand is really wide. Oh, be proud. Just relax. That was a beauty. Even Alright, let's see if we can get this in the first bunker. So, ball in the bunker, 160 to go. See, I can play up to a 3-iron out of the bunker with the Sand Viper. Not that I need a 3-iron, but I could play up to a 3-iron. 
and also see it's 90 to 100 percent on how much power i'll get and we'll compare that to the standard ball in a minute oh nearly of course the sand viper doesn't help us here we've got to chip this on our own Got it. So let's compare that to the standard ball. Hold two. It's a par five. Go on then. Oh, nice shot. Oh, not quite enough length to get it in there. But we'll do the same thing. We'll just we'll just drop it into the bunker. We don't want to plug it. We just want the ball in there. There you go. So 155 to go. Now you'll see it's between 70 and 90. And there's a miss hit chance. And look at the impact. We've got the flyer inside there so look and also look at the distance so there's a real benefit to and also if you look i can still play the three iron out but look at the error on it so we'll play our five iron we've got much less predictability on the on the control and we've got the potential of the flyer so the sand viper really gives you a much better chance of getting out of those longer fairway bunkers for the green side bunkers doesn't really change much to be honest Let's see if we nail the birdie Oh, we just missed it. Just relax. So that's the Sun Viper. Again, no penalty on it, but um, all it really helps you with is the long fairway bunkers, really. So on courses like um, Pine Hills or Imperial Garden, that might be a useful feature to have. It's a par five. So now let's look at the grass cutter. Uh, the grass cutter is kind of the sand viper, but for the rough. So it makes no difference when you play it in the. on the short stuff, but it makes a difference when you play it in the Great rough. Shot. Let's put one in the rough. And same sort of principle. You'll have less variability of power, and you'll get a better impact. So we put that in the rough. So 94 to 100%, so much less variability. And you'll see when I play the standard club in a minute. There you go, it's got 100% of the power. So we didn't get any sort of penalty. Oh, I got that quite close. Amazing! Oh, for the eagle! Yeah, we got our iron a bit better there. So despite putting that in the rough, we got the eagle. So let's let's play that again. But this time we'll do it with the standard club and you can see the difference. And see how much harder it is. Hold two. It's a par five. So back to the standard ball. Right. Same shot. Intentionally hitting it into the rough feels wrong. <laughs> so there you go, we're in the rough. 191 to go. You'll notice now, 84 to 90, so we're not going to get 100% power, but also we've got a lot more variability on it. Um, and we've also got the flyer and a really small impact zone. So let's try this shot. Much harder to hit. Got to be absolutely spot on. Yeah, we just ended up short because we only got 89% of the power. And again, out of this bit of rough, 82 to 90. Luckily, we chipped it in for the eagle, but I think I proved my point. Yeah, 
So this one I can see a bit of use for. There's lots of situations where you'll miss the fairway. Being able to hit longer and more accurately out of the rough would be an advantage. And again, it doesn't cost you anything anywhere else. It doesn't drop your power, any of those things. So let's have a look at the Ultra Approach Ball. Now the Ultra Approach Ball, it, this is a tricky one. It only really is of any use when you're super close. So I'll have to kind of create a shot here. Because it gives you the short approach range. So normally if you're inside 60 or 30 yards, you get the 60 or 30 yard approach. The Ultra Approach Ball opens up a third which is the 15 yard approach. So if I can sort of drop it about here, we might see it in action. Kind of difficult to do. Can we get it first time? Mm. Ah, 30 yard, never mind. Powered up before Ryan though, it's quite good. So I've got the 30 yard and the 60 yard. Ah, didn't quite do it. Let's try that again. It's a par five. So, Ultra Approach Ball gives us the use of the 15 yard approach. What does that mean? Well, usually if you put a ball within 60 or 30 yards of the pin, you'll get access to the approach mode, which basically caps the power at 60 or 30 and means you're much more accurate because you can control the power on a, on a shorter scale. This ball gives you access to a third range, which is the 15 yard approach. So if I can get this 15 yards from the pin, which is easier said than done, I'll see if I can show it to you. Again, this is one, it, it's not massively useful because there's not many opportunities to be 15 yards from the pin. And I think I'm too far away here. Yeah, I'm 35. I'm leveling up the four iron nicely. So where the hell is fit on the pin? It's probably going to be over here. So let's play a little cheeky shot. See if we can put it a bit closer. I don't want to be on the green. There you go. Oh, 15. So not quite. So we've still got 30 and 60. Let's try it again. There we go. So now we're inside 15 yards. We've now got a 15 yard and a 30 yard. So the ultra approach ball lets us use the 15 yard. Look how narrow that tolerance is there on the um, on the distance. So the theory being that when you're super close range like this, it makes your chips that bit easier. I'm not convinced by it, if I'm honest. Because you can see your chips always drop short anyway. And I'd probably always whack the power up to 30. So... You can see the use of the ball, but I think it's a bit its a bit specialist. Um, I mean, some greens, you can't actually be 15 yards. The greens are bigger. But there you go. It's a par five. So in a similar way to the Ultra Approach Ball, there's also the 160 ball. This one kind of lets you found tune your power. So normally, your power meter goes from zero to... 100%. Now it goes from 60% to 100 So it stretches out that longer range and gives you more control over it. So if I just set the minimum power, that's actually now 60%. So 61% was the smallest I could get. So you can actually get more accuracy on those shots because your divisions are now not percentages of 100, if you see what I mean. So if you kind of look at it, the distinction between the, the tenths on there now, or the quarters, sorry, is over the 40% the of that range, not over the, the whole 100% of your power. Basically, it means you can be just that more accurate. And I did use this when I was struggling on some of the courses at the lower ranks. I did use a few of these balls. The weird bit is putting, though. Putting with these is strange. Uh, now we're in approach mode, though, so that one thing to be careful of. In approach mode, it goes back to 100%. Out of approach mode, it's 60. Now, that can really mess with your head. So, you can either hit this ball 60 yards in approach mode, between 0 and 60, but here it's 60 to 100. So, just be careful of that. It can um, it can catch you out. Uh. 
So approach mode effectively cancels it. And then when you put you back to 0 and 100 again, so it's a bit like approach mode, it cancels the it cancels the effect of it. So that's a 6000 ball. Can be useful, particularly if you you want to be super accurate around the pins. And again, they're dirt cheap. They don't cost many coins to buy. But can't use them in tournament play. So there's one more ball to look at that kind of is in the power category, which is the super low. And guess what the super low does? Gives you a really low shot. So the wind normally is impacted by your shot type. The backspin shots are higher, therefore you get more wind. Top spin shots are lower. Super low ball with the same amount of spin will give you a much lower trajectory shot. So effectively you hit a flatter shot, therefore the wind impacts it less. So if you're playing on a windy course, effectively you'll get less movement from the wind from a super low ball. So I should actually put less in for the wind. Because it'll be a lower shot, particularly if you hit top spin. I mean, look at that, it's a skiddy little runner, isn't it? So it's giving you a much lower trajectory of shot. Could do with my um, ultra approach ball here. That's way short, I think. Good, good. Yeah. That's good. And of course, it has no impact in approach mode or, or when you're putting. So it only really impacts it when you're playing off the fairway or the tee. So again, the super low ball, if you know it's going to be high wind, can be useful. Um, but again, there are some courses where the altitude, you, you need higher shots. So I think in a Vortex Valley, the fifth hole, some of the Pine Hills where you're hitting uphill or downhill, you know, the super low shot may not be what you want. So not always suitable. The final ball, the hardest ball to find in the game, is the triple impact ball. I've only got four of these. Uh, I found a couple fishing, which I've got a video on, um, and I've won a couple in tournaments. They're so rare. Um, what this ball does is basically make you a god. So look at your perfect impact zone. There is three wide instead of one, the bright white part. It just makes it incredibly hard to miss the perfect impact. So of course I missed it, just to show you on purpose. But in theory, um, your perfect impact zone is that much wider. Your perfect impact zone is three wide instead of one wide. So um, we'll try that again. See if we can actually hit it. Uh, it can be really useful on places like Alpine when you're trying to chase some condors. Because you can guarantee it. If you've got a really tricky shot around the corner and you need the ultra spin, it's well worth it because it gives you that much more freedom. You know, you can be just a little bit off and still hit the shot. So it doesn't change anything else about your shot, just means you can get, almost guarantee your perfect impact. I'm pretty sure some of those ridiculous scores you see on the um, open online courses are uh, people playing with this ball. Because, you know, I can get ultra backspin on demand and, you know, put balls up and spin them back. So you can see why. And we get the Albatross just to prove it. Um, you can see why they're, they're ultra rare. So there you go. That's the last ball type, the triple impact. Um, Best ball in the game, super rare. Oh, leveled up the six iron. The thing to remember about all of these is you can use them on one hole um, as much as you like. So I haven't actually depleted my balls by playing them in the one hole mode. If you play them in the nine hole mode, though, in, in tournaments or solo play, then it will take the ball off you. So that's why I was happy to use the ball because it doesn't cost me anything. The other thing to remember is the system remembers what the last one you used was, so I'm going to take it off and put it back to standard because I don't want to um, I don't want to use my triple impact ball and lose one of my four. I hope you enjoyed that intro to the balls. Um, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Um, and I'll see you next time for a bit more of your Golf.